Hello, everyone. We should be live now. Uh, I'm Majid. I'm usually doing the technical stuff behind the scenes here, but today I'm pulling double duty and also doing the introduction in the name of Stiftung Asienhaus and the working group on resources. Um, we are co-organizing this with the uh, Department for Southeast Asian Studies at the University Bonn, which is also having the DS Academicus today. So this is also part of the program there. Uh, we are also co-organizing this with the Philippine Bureau, the Hochschulgruppe Fridays for Future Bonn and Fridays for Future Cologne. Uh, we are very happy and proud to be uh, the co-organizers of this lecture series, which I believe very well spans the bridge um, of uh, like a serious academic um, tackling of the issues but also inviting activists and taking a closer look at what it's actually like on the ground. And I'm also very much enjoying how much we can connect speakers from the Global South and listeners and viewers from the Global South with civil society here, because that is basically what Stiftung Asienhaus, which I'm representing today, does. We are a foundation based in Cologne. We are working on topics such as climate justice, resource equality, workers' rights, human rights in the Asian context as a whole, but also rather specifically in Southeast Asia. And the working group on resources basically does the same with more of focus on resource equality and uh, also very strong focus on Southeast Asia. We have a meeting tomorrow. And if you want to hook up, I'll uh, post the link in the chat later and you can join up. Currently, we're doing a big project on palm oil, which is quite interesting, uh, and also fits with the extractive theme that we have today. And with that, I'll hand you over to your moderator for today. Thank you very much. Okay. Thank you very much. My name is uh... Kure Okuyuku, and um, I am here a student of the University of Bonn. I'm a student of uh, Mr. Pai and Mr. Seaman. And uh, today uh, we are discu um, discussing this. Um, our today's sub gender and struggle or call in Indonesia. Our speaker today is uh, Siti Maimuna. Ms. Siti Maimuna was born in Jember, the town of Jember, in the province of East Java, and she first attended the uh, Jember University, and where she studied soil agriculture course, course study. And later on, she went to the University of Indonesia, where she completed her master's degree of politics in the year 2060. Today, Siti Maimuna is an Indonesian scholar activist. She is an ecological justice activist and currently also a doctoral candidate at the University of Passau in Germany. And um, Vigo ITN Mary Stovskaya Kurdel. And her research is currently focuses on coal mining, ethnicity, and resistance in Indonesia. Tang di sini, Siti Maimuna, di diskursi Universitas Kami tentang iklim di Asia Tenggara. Welcome here, and uh, we are very um, first uh, Siti Maimuna for presentation, and then we would like uh, happy to join the audience for uh, our discussion uh, by asking questions. Now I'm here to you. Okay, um, thank you, Korai. Your, your Indonesian is better than my German, actually. Terima kasih. Thank you very much. <laughs> okay. Um, hi, everyone. Uh, can I see my screen? Yeah, okay. Just make it louder. And make it this one is more. Wait. Uh, sorry. Wait. Just need to make it this smaller, and then okay. Um, thank you, everyone. Uh, 
First, I would like to uh, thank you uh, for the organizer, the Department of Southeast Asian Studies, um, Wally, and also Christina, who introduced me. Um, uh, and also thank you for the supporter to make this uh, event happen. Uh, and second, I want uh, to introduce Wego. Uh, Wego is Wellbeing, Ecology, Gender, and Community with Big O. Um, it's a network of 17 university and institution uh, across continent, me with 14 others uh, students who study in different issues um, using feminist political ecology uh, perspective. But uh, before I joined WEGO, um, I uh, actually, um, uh, mining issue has become my personal interest since uh, 20 years ago. That's why I want to share about uh, gender uh, struggle uh, and struggle over coal in Indonesia. So when I was uh, studying uh, soil science in um, university, like what I mentioned, um, you can see here the, the in the map of Indonesia, the, the red dot in the map of Indonesia is uh, East Java. So in the same times there is uh, uh, gold mine, proposed gold mine in my hometown, which is Will Digging uh, National Park. So uh, as a member of natural lover groups, um, I then try to understand what the, what the gold, what the regulation, what the implementation in Indonesia. And then uh, I connected with the um, mining advocacy network. So by that, I also uh, connected with the organization um, who supported community affected by mining um, in Indonesia. So uh, it's bring me also uh, to the academics uh, journey. And then uh, here I am today. Uh, I will talk about the coal mining in Indonesia experiences. So I draw my presentation in three parts. Um, first is about the experiences of Tanah Air. So what Tanah Air mean, it's it's uh, Indonesian concept actually is about um, uh, concept of the nation living, living space. Uh, so uh, tanah, it means soil, land, air, it means water, but it's actually like a space, like, you know, because air it also is part of that. Um, so the experience of nation uh, living space. Uh, and then second is the experience from the islands. I will bring the experiences. I share the experiences of Kalimantan as the uh, coal, most the coal extracted from this island and also the experience of citizen and women and the experiences of resistance. Um, so uh, I hope uh, to answer three question, key question. First, in what historical context, uh, social, political, and ecological coal economy operate in Indonesia? Second, what and how the coal extraction have different gender impact in the community? And third is how resistance has been galvanized by political change in relation to coal. Um, the first about the experiences of Tana Air, uh, how the political ecology of coal. So um, there is four things before I really talk about the how the existing coal situation in Indonesia. Um, it's historical, but also it's existing. Um, first is about what um, uh, Gellert called the situation of extractive regime in Indonesia. So um, extractive regime is how the government combi uh, combine predatory practices and uh, developmental uh, support by exportation of extractive uh, commodity, uh, various um, uh, commodity. Um, you can uh, mention oil, gas, timber, mineral, fishery also. Um, so you can see uh, how um, after independence since 65 uh, to uh, during Suharto regime, they re re really rely on uh, petroleum and timber, uh, of course, because it's uh, unrenewable re natural resources, uh, petroleum is declined and uh, at the moment we are the net importer of oil. Um, forest or timber is a sustainable um, material, but uh, because it's more uh, cut than uh, plants, so um, the industrial uh, um, 
time but it's also collapse. Decentralization, uh, we have then limitation uh, of uh, commodity to extract. So um, in this context, uh, mainly like the economy following global market commodity. So the state is conduct territorialization. Uh, they're following the notion of uh, colonial, which is claim all the land is uh, become a state land, uh, including forests. Uh, they're not, um, not recognizing the, the indigenous people rights. So the, um, the state conduct territorialization, uh, like uh, come up with several regulation mapping and also uh, release the several of permits. Um, in some case, uh, in many cases, people expel from their living space um, or uh, have a long life conflict with the government, state, uh, company, um, and also the state apparatus. Uh, see, you can see the, the graphics of uh, from the consortium Agraria uh, about um, you know the wave of the conflicts, um, ag agrarian conflict. So when Suharto Paul in 1998 and Indonesia have a political reform, extractive regime change is more. It seems more accommodate uh, to community, but not for significant characters, the predatory, which is Gellert's college extractive regime with alter uh, developmentalists. The second situation is the cheap nature. So in the capitalist um, system. Uh, tanah air is uh, the life, the life space, and the living things is uh, simplified, become nature, and then natural resources, and then uh, cheap nature. So um, the accumulation of uh, the accumulation of wealth uh, through the commodity is need expansion of uh, it needs the territorial expansion and labor. Uh, in the context of labor, um, uh, is human and non-human labor. So human labor is, um, you know, men as cheap labor and women if they they also work, uh, but also women unpaid labor because they in this in the um, uh, working system they like uh, supporting of uh, uh, men labor in the family in the domestic way, uh, and of course the non-human nature such as land, living things, and forests uh, with uh, the, the biodiversity. But how the imagination of the cheap nature, actually, I share the experience of uh, um, the experience of the Makroman village in Samarinda, uh, the capital city of East Kalimantan uh, province, uh, when there is a, a, a poor uh, a farmer, they don't have land uh, because the colonial um, during colonial and then uh, there is the transmigration program that continue by Indonesian government, they moved to East Kalimantan. Uh, they uh, moved by the government to East Kalimantan uh, to the surrounding uh, swamps area. So they uh, uh, changed the, the area, uh, become the rice world productive, it needs more uh, than 20 years. So you can see the, the Mr. Niti in her um, Rambutan garden. Um, but then during uh, local autonomy in 2004, there is the um, CV Arjuna uh, coal mine permits uh, come to the area. And then in 2006, uh, they start to operate. And then in 2008, the, uh, the first flood hit the rice field and also the village. And um, in 2015, uh, the area is become like this. Mm. So this is the Makroman area at the moment, uh, Makroman village, uh, surrounding by uh, eggs, uh, abandoned uh, coal pit. The third uh, context is uh, extractive oligarch. Uh, so according uh, Jeffrey Winters, Suharto regime is, they call a sultanic uh, oligarch, um, which is, uh, he was the center of controlling the power. But now during, uh, but now um, oligarchs is like in everywhere. So the rich and powerful individual who maintain, um, you know, or individual wealth and the social rank collectively in the electoral 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 domain, uh, democracy system, including they establish supporting the political parties, funding for uh, policy changing, even bribe if necessary, becoming politician. 
uh, and so on. So you can see here uh, from the Marepus corner um, uh, infographic, uh, and I think in the um, in the last uh, two decade, two decade uh, is is, uh, is quite similar. So how um, the business people is also uh, uh, most of a parliament member. And then uh, the right side, uh, there is the infographic uh, by Jatam who um, drawing how the president candidate and businessman, uh, businessman a politician alliance in the last president election 2019 is really expressed how the situation of executive oligarch. Um, that the situation and also, um, you know, the historical uh, context, it's make the gap uh, between Indonesian citizen uh, around one percent of Indonesian rich people have forty nine point three percent of national wealth at the moment. So that the third and the fourth uh, context is about the social, ecological, and uh, climate uh, crisis. Um, so both the concept of development and the implementation affected people and environments uh, historically and accumulated uh, intertwined with the climate crisis. Um, some of that you can see, you can find the report uh, of Jatam here. So intertwined with the climate crisis, which affected people differently, depend on time, space, knowledge, um, economy, gender, and others' um, um, uh, social identity. Um, so then it's uh, bring us to the, uh, the situation of climate uh, crisis at the moment. Um, how uh, the climate crisis is triggering more disaster in Indonesia. Um, you can see from this, sorry, it's in Indonesian, um, the infographic. So increase the number of disaster from 2003, uh, from 403, now become six times. Uh, and then <coughs> um, uh, increasing uh, again uh, in 2019. Um, and also because uh, there is uh, risks that we need to highlight because 60% um, of Indonesian citizens, we are like densely populated archipelagic state. Um, so almost 60% of citizens is in uh, coastal areas. So extreme weather change the rainfall pattern, hydro crease and raising the sea level is um, no more common in Indonesia. So um, this context, historical context and existing context is important to understanding uh, political economy and ecology, ecological context which set by the extraction of consumption of fossil fuels, uh, especially the coal that relate with the climate, uh, um, climate change. Uh, then I want to talk about the contribution of uh, uh, greenhouse gas uh, in Indonesia um which is uh together uh, the, the first the first uh, GHG emission uh contribution uh, of indonesia is come from forest uh, land sector so you can see here for example in sumatra uh, islands uh, the graphic with the sumatra um how the coal is also contribute the extraction of coal is contribute to the uh, GHG emission from forest and land sector um, which actually Indonesia is just have a 3% of world deposit, but we are like first exporter of thermal coal um, because the extractive regime that I mentioned before. And then uh, where is it? It's actually uh, cent centralized in the uh, island of Kalimantan with 59% of deposit. And then also in uh, Sumatra with uh, 41 deposit, but uh, Kalimantan have a better one, the, the quality like bitumens uh, in the context of, uh, I mean, uh, uh, chemical uh, contamination thing. Um, so um, you will you will see if we talk about uh, the perspective of the North and the South injustice, there is internal injustice in Indonesia actually uh because um, most of the coal is digging from the two island and um most the consumption of the of the electricity from coal is actually uh, uh java um so in the last um uh, java island i mean with the blue you can see the blue here so the red one the number is uh most of the 
uh, coal uh, is extracted from East Kalimantan and South Kalimantan. Later, it will go to Central Kalimantan and uh, North Kalimantan uh, because they not yet like they they, they uh, plan to build the infrastructure to uh, uh, railway to transporting the coal actually. Um, but so in the last 19 years, uh, the the coal extraction is increasing uh, from 67 million tons in 2001 to uh, last year is like um, uh, almost uh, 10 times, not including 50 to 90 uh, million tons uh, is illegal uh, coal, uh, referring the, the government data, so it's increasing. But the important fact is 80% uh, of the extraction of coal is uh, dominated by the, by uh, ten companies, uh, which is uh, uh, most of the companies have relation with the oligarch uh, person that uh, in the in the minister and in the parliament member kind of that. So that's the first uh, facts about the extraction. How about the the consumption of the the second is about the second emission of um, greenhouse uh, greenhouse gas effect. It's come from uh, um, uh, emission from energy, uh, which is um, most of it. Uh, no, first, I want to just show you the pictures uh, from uh, Monga by article in Lokna. Um, this is uh, in Aceh. Uh, there is children like uh, so the the coal. Um, this is uh, the case of. Just into second uh, 22 November, there is the coal uh, ship wreck. Um, uh, bring the coal to the to the. There is the cement factory uh, Lafarge, I think the biggest one in Sumatra, um, and uh, for for their coal power plant. So uh, the similar case almost happened in uh, a coal power plant uh, around Indonesia actually, um, but. By this, I want to highlight is actually the industrial and commercial is the most uh, biggest consumer of the coal in Indonesia. Um, even just 25% of coal that dig from the previous slide I show you, 75% uh, of it is exported. So it's not just we just not talk about Indonesia, but also uh, you know Japan, um, uh, China, and also India and others uh, Southeast Asia countries that uh, import their coal uh, uh, from Indonesia. So 80% uh, of electricity come from fossil fuels, but 61% from coal power plants. You can see the the graphics in the uh, left side how is actually, um, you know, uh, our oil is declining and then gas also. And now um, we depend on the coal, even in 2025, the projection, the projection we still use 54% uh, of coal. But the important thing is uh, the, the Indonesian uh, Corruption Watch report about who's behind the power plant. So it's also have relation with the oligarch uh, family, um, like uh, at least three ministers uh, have relation with, the, with their uh, family business have um, uh, um, uh, uh, coal power plant. Just uh, highlight in the Rio, you can see here with the red one, um, there is the case that uh, one of our minister, I think is transportation minister that get jailed uh, because the, uh, involved in the um, corruption case uh, of the um, you know development of uh, of coal power plant when he was as um, a parliament members. So uh, that's the the um, uh, existing situation uh, at the moment. Um, so. You can imagine uh, by extraction and also a consumption of energy, which is rely on the coal that involving the political economies and actor in Indonesia is difficult to bring to the good direction. That's why um, I think it's unquestions when, uh, you know, uh, Indonesian government respond in a different way uh, by release the controversial regulation called Omnibus Law. Um, which is uh, actually Amendment 78X, uh, and now we have one uh, regulation called 
Undang-undang Cipta Kerja. Uh, it's like Undang-undang uh, Cipta Kerja with 1,087 pages. Uh, the government said it will simplifying, um, you know, uh, simplifying the, the mechanism or um, to uh, opening uh, easy doing business, but it's actually it's need uh, more than 400 implementation uh, regulation at the moment. But what important about omnibus law things is um, uh, first uh, is about the coal and mining acts, which is then uh, decided to release first. Uh, in the beginning is part of omnibus law, um, but. Uh, what, what the important thing is, uh, I just highlight some of them is like criminalization of people and human right. Uh, human right defender is really is really obvious in in this um, regulation. And the community effect that is included at the moment, they just uh, shrinking the community is just you know uh, in the mining area. But you know that uh, coal mine is have or mining generally have flowing impact from the upstream to the downstream. And also the paralyzing environmental impact assessment, uh, they abolish um, this, this, this regulation abolish the uh, environmental impact uh, assessment commission, which is community is part of that at the moment. So uh, they, they know uh, who decided of AEA, environmental impact assessment, is uh, the government and the expert with certificate. Um, but the most uh, controversial thing is because this new regulation, uh, Coal and Mining Act, and also Omnibus Law, is um, automatically uh, continuing uh, the extended permits of uh, the biggest coal mines, which is have relation with the oligarch uh, family uh, again. Um, and if they building the the stream industry, they will get. Uh, a bonus zero of royalty. So um, that's uh, the situation of the experiences of Tanhair. And then I will come to the second part, the experiences uh, from Kalimantan, the island and uh, the citizen. Um, Kalimantan um, always as a frontier commodity uh, since colonial. Why I bring uh, Kalimantan because uh, why I said Kalimantan because the the, uh, the historical and also the biggest of uh, coal extraction is is come from Kalimantan. But in the past during colonial, Kalimantan is always um, you know uh, the area extraction is like following the commodity global commodity demand. Um, during colonial until now, like I mentioned about Suharto, and there is heavily uh, uh, what you call it a territorialized. If you combine the size of the a concession like uh, logging, oil, uh, oil palm plantation, and conservation uh, uh, conservation area, the size is largest than the province itself. Even uh, Samarinda, the capital city, is like seventy percent of the Kamarin, uh, Samarinda area is the um, uh, coal mine concession. So, um, uh, in 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 kind of the situation. Uh, so extractive regime heavily rely on Kalimantan, especially uh, uh, is Kalimantan. So it's given is give different effects uh, to the citizen, such as I will share the Rahmawati experience. Uh, she brings the photo of Raihan, uh, his son who died in the mother days in 2015 in one of 200, uh, one of 200, uh, more than 250s of abandoned coal mine pit in, in Samarinda, uh, which is in Kalimantan, is Kalimantan alone, there is 1,735 abandoned coal pits. Um, Rahmawati also uh, have similar problems with other citizen, which is water crisis. And even one third of uh, uh, um, citizen is spend the money for uh, uh, monthly, from monthly regional minimum wage for spending, uh, water spending. Um, there's regular flood since 2000, uh, 2005 when, when the permits is increasing with security problems um, uh, and also the health problems. Um, I think three of the, of the health problems is um, commons uh, 
uh, for um, Samarinda citizen is gastric problems, and then uh, um, respiratory problems, and then the uh, blood tensions problem. And also industrial disaster, if I talk industrial disaster, I mean the infrastructure that built by uh, the coal mining is also, um, um, you know, uh, destroyed or destruct because landslide, uh, broken the road and also bridge, for example. The, corrupt, the corruption is also the, uh, uh, really obvious about that. So this is general, um, is general uh, uh, experience of uh, people in Kalimantan. So since 2009, there is 39 citizen who died in the abandoned coal mine pits in East Kalimantan and no one's become legal case. Um, most of them are boys and students. So you can imagine if they still live, maybe they still they they will get the better um, education like you are here. Um, uh, but I also want to bring uh, the different experience. Of course, I just uh, specifically will bring the experience of the women's, uh, the mothers that lost their children. Um, because extractive economy is strengthening gender injustice in some way. Uh, when we talk about the experience, different experience of uh, men and women, but when also even when I when I talk about the experience of the children who died, there is also the experience not not just gender and also about the age, the intersectional uh, experience. Um, women and men have different experience uh, in the context of biological. Um, that's also have relation with how the, the contamination affects uh, to the body of the women and men. Uh, men and women have different experience in the context of subordination, double burden, stigmatization, marginalization, and violation. Uh, I just want to give example, for example, um, uh, the experience of the mother who lost uh, their children even when they work in home, like selling the food or kind of that, they have stole. Uh, but the, the, the society still call her help the, the husband and not the breadwinner. Um, so the, the man is always breadwinner. Uh, and even when, when the mother come to the police to ask about investigation of his uh, uh, dead uh, son or daughter, uh, for example, the police said that, no, you cannot ask them. Uh, you need to ask uh, your husband come to us because in our regulation, a husband is like the leader in the family. Um, so women is our subordinate because they are uh, not a family leader. They also have the double burden in the context of, you know, domestic work and with the, with the change of uh, environmental is also give them more burden of the work. And uh, because the child is died in the, in the mine pits, uh, uh, they stigmatize is not, able to take care of the children, they uh, uh, accuse as a worse wife, or uh, when the company come, uh, the representative company come without her uh, knowing and then tell to uh, the, the, the representative tell to her neighbor that they will give compensation to the, the mother, even it's not receiving yet. Um, people accuse her mother like selling the children for the compensation from the coal company. Um, and of course, the the, uh, the physical psychological trauma um, experience. Men also have different experience. Um, uh, for example, uh, the husband pushed by the family to uh, give divorce to the wife, uh, call uh, him as a weak husband can control the wife. For example, so the, the kind of experience is actually in the context of. Uh, how the law is possible to allow even strengthening the gender injustice in the society. Um, so uh, in the experience of women and men have different, uh, women have more uh, level of uh, um, struggle, individual, family, community, state, and even like a face-to-face -face with the corporation. Um, that's the how it's important to see a gender in the context of, uh, you know, uh, relating uh, coal and uh, climate change, for example. So then I bring you to the, the sorry, it's the three, uh, the experiences of resistance. Um, well, it's interesting to follow um, 
the dynamic uh, of the political economy in Indonesia, like I mentioned, but also follow how the dynamics of this uh, of the uh, civil society and uh, relate with the with the um, formation of uh, um, eradication uh, corruption eradication KPK. Uh, which is uh, KPK in 2015 start to uh, have like coordination supervision program to prevention of uh, corruption, which is uh, start to handle uh, the corruption in the natural resources issues. Then they collaborating with the NGOs, uh, including, uh, for example, like Ichewe, Indonesian Corruption Watch, um, a Friend of the Earth, and many others, including Mining Advocacy Network, Jata. So uh, there is interesting to follow how people engage, uh, how the, the NGOs engage with this. For example, uh, in 2017, JATAM start to providing um, kind of uh, investigation research about what the relation uh, of local election with Ijon politic. Ijon politic, it's mean like, uh, what you call it, bargain or exchange uh, for, the, for the money um, that give by uh, someone, company uh, for the candidate in the election. So they providing several of the materials uh, to to um, you know uh, connecting what the connection between um, uh, uh, mining uh, and um, the candidate in the in the local election, and uh, uh, and then continue uh, during the election national election. Um, I think uh, it's important contribution of Jatam is also providing what the the mapping relation behind the uh, the supporter of the president which is uh, two of them uh, really uh, have rely uh, really have relation with the with the uh, mining and you know the the natural resources extractions in indonesia which is uh, not the new i mean it's a long time ago also but there is also changing the the uh, i think it's make um, it it's also um, influencing uh, the situation, I mean, the work of KPK, when then uh, there's tension to press KPK how to make weakening KPK. And then the, the peak is uh, when the, the regulation about KPK, when I said about KPK is, is about the, the National Commission of Corruption Eradication, which is uh, this get amendment by the government and DPR in September 2019, which is because KPK is like giving hope to Indonesian citizen about uh, you know the, the the clean of the government kind of that. Um, so there is a big uh, big movement and uh, uh, called Bersihkan Indonesia, but then uh, there is still continuing uh, of in the second term of the government uh, because uh, the oligarchy system also uh, finally there is the omnibus law. What happened then, uh, how the dynamic of the, of the um, civil society engaged with the kind of the report and they have discussion in the local, you can see here the banner, a big banner in the, in the, um, in the East Kalimantan, I think it's in uh, Sanga Sanga, it's in, it's in uh, East Kalimantan area. And they have uh, more discussion to uh, giving uh, awareness to the public. Um, but also the really uh, uh, relation, uh, people really, really connected with KPK, it's make um, the movement even bigger. Um, I think we can, we need to account uh, the contribution of, there is the movie that released just a week or a couple of days before election called Sexy Killers. I suggest you to see the movie, how the relation between oligarchs, uh, extractive oligarchs with the with the um, you know uh, uh, people around the, the president, and the the when the peak is is in during um, uh, KPK uh, amendment KPK uh, the act of KPK amendments uh, by by the government and the and the parliament member. There's a huge uh, protest, and at la at le uh, in the last it's like the the change of or. The amendment of the uh, coal and mineral acts in October uh, in May 2020, which is uh, then uh, because it's COVID, I think it's the first time uh, uh, civil society and the community uh, develop what we call people tribunal to legitimate to delegitimate not deleg sorry it's wrong delegitimate uh, coal and mineral acts, um, which involving all the representative uh, um, uh, community affected in Indonesia. 
And just uh, last month, no, I think two months ago, there is a big protest. I think you can see in the television and you can see the spot of protest in everywhere. So um, that's how the galvanize, uh, um, uh, the political change galvanize relating to the coal. Why I talk relating with the coal? Because every uh, resistance is actually have relation with the coal because most the energy that used for whatever extraction that uh, um, doing in Indonesia, like coal power, uh, power, uh, uh, coal power plant or even uh, oil palm is need um, coal for electricity. But there is also the, the long uh, life uh, struggle uh, uh, in, the, in the community. For example, in, they are not the passive community, right? Uh, there is resistance in Kalimantan, for example, the, the solidarity of the mothers that lost the children, um, how they united each other, even they come to the school and talk to the student um, to be careful with the coal mine pit, for example. There is Samarinda Youth Weekly Thursday Action for Resistance uh, every uh, Thursday. They're standing in the front of the governor palace to uh, remind them always and give awareness. And even in the scale of village, there is the festival of the San, San, Sungai Santan, uh, Santan River uh, every year starting uh, in the last, it's already uh, two years, which is um, they're promoting that uh, the way how they reject uh, uh, coal mine actually. Um, also the resistance against men some ways have relation with the coal because 55% uh, of the electricity that use uh, mainly coal also consumed by the, the cement factory. Um, this is resistant against uh, cement. I think uh, also uh, Europe civil society also support this one uh, or painting for resistance that uh, do by, um, I forget the name, um, in the artist in the, in the central uh, Java. And also resistant against a big coal mining in Banyuwangi, for example, um, how the, the mothers jumps the women jumps the, to the um, pipe hole that dig by the company to uh, uh, for uh, transport for uh, energy uh, to the prop. I think it's at the moment it's operation, but uh, the gold mining is also have relation with the with the coal in the context of electricity. So um, I will uh, I think I will stop here. Um, I hope it will uh, give you the idea what the situation in Indonesia. Thank you. Terima kasih, um, Siti Maimuna untuk presentasi bagus anda. Uh, thank you very much for your interesting uh, presentation with all these um, interesting, uh, infographic, interesting and colorful infographics. And now we are heading uh, towards uh, questions um, coming out of the audience uh, towards uh, this, about this subject. As far as I know, um, Jutta Leschner has got a question uh, to you. Jutta, what's your question? So, hi, everybody, and my thank you very much, Jaimas Kasisi, for your lecture. So, and my question is um, we have read about um, it in the text about corruption, and you mentioned it uh, several times. Um, if we go to the whole thing, what do you think that the central government? Will it have a, um, a chance to eliminate this corruption um, just to, to, to receive its own goals, to achieve the goals um, it has put to itself um, in, with regard to climate change? Sorry, I don't, I don't really get the point, uh, the corruption in climate change. Sorry, could you repeat again? Yeah, so the corruption, we have read about this and you mentioned it several times. Uh -huh. um, so and corruption, as, as I understood, is with within Kalimantan, um, so in the smaller areas. And now, if we have a look to the central government in in Jakarta, um, because they are making the laws and they have they try to achieve certain goals um, um, in, for climate change uh, to make to make it better, yeah, um, and to avoid uh, the destructive power of climate change. Do you think? that the central government has a chance um, to eliminate, eliminate this corruption um, because it wants to achieve its own uh, uh, climate change goals. 
Do I need to answer or do we need to wait others question or what? No, that was it's very that thank you. <laughs> okay. Um core uh, no, we're going step by step, so uh, each uh, answer for each question. Okay, okay. Well, uh, for me, the change is not in the central government, I think, uh, but um, in the in the hand of the people and the civil society. I hope so, uh, because at the moment the the omnibus law is like cutting the the what you call it. Um, the power of the local governments. Um, even we know that local government, uh, especially in the in the uh, coal, uh, you know, the the area that heavily rely on the extractive economy, they're not really progressive in the context of uh, corruption things. Um, but I think uh, it's important uh, to rely on some of the um, government body. Um, for example, like uh, KPK, even, well, maybe we still have hope uh, they, the KPK just get the fishery minister. <laughs> they just uh, get the fishery minister um, in the place of corruption. Uh, but um, the, the regulation is make KPK weak, actually. So um, it needs a uh, more strong the civil uh, society and also the citizen to to uh, to what you call it uh, press on it because I um, like uh, you know that there is the mosi tidak percaya it means uh, motion uh, with uh, not belief to the parliament's member uh, especially but also the governments because. Uh, time by time is like what uh, people hope is um, even uh, you know the the academia is like call for boycott actually last time <laughs> so I mean there's the tension I think the good things is the consolidation of civil society um, in the context of they have once uh, even like uh, uh, you know the the labor uh, groups um, environmental uh, groups and others is like uh, they have uh, one call in the context of omnibus law, even the indigenous people organization, for example. I think it's good start to, um, last time, uh, some of them also, uh, well, the government uh, asked to meet them, the, the, the presidents, uh, some of them uh, reject uh, to meet, but they still have one uh, direction to reject the omnibus law thing. So. I think that's the, the important hopes uh, at the moment to keep uh, not divided, have the uh, spirit um, and the continuing um, the struggle, I hope. Okay, um, who's going to ask the next question? Uh, Mr. Pai? Can I just uh, respond also to, to that question? Because I think it, be, it was very clear in uh, my presentation that um, it's the central government that is is corrupt in in the sense that uh, both candidates were funded and supported by the big coal companies and that's a very important uh, connection she's making in her talk because this explains then why the government is is acting in this way um, you know if they were serious about their own declarations on climate change they would stop burning coal right that's the only way to get out of uh, these huge emissions that uh, Indonesia is also creating. So, um, so I think it's yeah, it's pretty clear that the uh, they are not stopping burning coal, but they are actually expanding the the coal industry because um, there's lots and lots of money to be made in with it. Thank you very much, Mr. Pai, for your point. And now, who's uh, going to ask uh, the next question? Anyone having a second question? Um, yeah, correct. Yes, Maximilian, your question, Thank please. You. First of all, thanks for a great presentation. Um, and I was wondering, I was thinking about the teenagers in Indonesia because uh, what does a typical Indonesian teen uh, thinks about brown coal production compared to the actual climate change and stuff? So, yeah. Um, the teenagers, uh, I think now 
I mean, climate change is climate change. Uh, I think um, corruption is uh, uh, issues. Uh, like people connect with the issue, but also the climate change at the moment is like um, important issues that uh, make uh, people uh, connect with the environment issues. Um, but most of them in the city and is in Java, yeah? because uh, most of uh, people, Indonesian people uh, uh, live in Java. But there is also movement in the school. For example, um, uh, there is uh, some organization, I mean, uh, um, you know, high school students, they establish the organization and then um, social media is make also easy way for them to uh, get a support, a supporter and kind of that. Um, but I think it's important is uh, how to connecting them with the um, something that they is not in their backyard. For example, like you know the the coal extraction things kind of that. So I think it's important. Um, Indonesia is like the archipelagic island, so um, they sometimes it's not connecting each other in the context of island. So then. Then it's become the the what you call it the how they united each other and become um, the archipelago resistance, not just uh, you know you as youth. And I think there is a possible. Um, I just um, when I, I I talk about the tribunals, uh, for me is I I never have experience. Uh, like attending the tribunal by online, um, but uh, in the past you need uh, money and then you know transportation to make people uh, from uh, North Maluku, for example, and even Papua uh, come to Jakarta. Yeah, but uh, in the tribunal you even hear the women priest, for example really talk strongly about uh, what the mining situation in their area that I never hear before, for example. So um, I think uh, the kind of voice also need to really, uh, for example, like um, refer, uh, you know, how their situation in the context of se security and kind of thing. I think it's important uh, to use that kind of uh, connection um, to bring the voice and, Make it uh, the the teenagers, for example, um, become aware about that, and I think it's really important the the um, solidarity between them in the context of uh, you know the 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 mother that lose um, her children, for example. I think it's important for teenagers also aware that there is um, kind of the experience as like their age also have the kind of experience of. Uh, because of coal extraction. So uh, there is many things uh, to do by Indonesian civil society to bring the youth in the context of um, uh, movement, I guess. Okay, thank you. Um, Julia, 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 you, I think you have got a question. Your question, please. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you very much, Mbak Nai, for your presentation. Uh, I have a question, actually, like, uh, especially this is related to your very significant period of experience. Um, excuse me, Miss Julia, can you please turn uh, on your microphone? Because some audience, uh, people from the audience have got difficulties to understand you. Oh, I'm so sorry. Uh, is it, okay, is it audible now? Can you all hear me? Yeah, we can hear you, but the sound level is very low. Can you try to speak a bit louder, please, for the okay. audience? It means I have to shout a bit. Actually, my volume is already like max, but yeah, I'll try. Uh, is it okay now for the sound? Yeah, it's better. Yeah, it's okay, okay I think. Thank you. Uh, but my, what I would like to ask you is actually like, uh, this is related to your very significant period of experience in organizing the grassroots community and also advocating the coal mining cases, uh, you and your group uh, in Jatam. So my question is that, uh, how do you and Jatam are strategizing when you guys are facing problems of internal frictions and conflicts 
within the community that you are facilitating. And then also at the same time, you also, you and your organizations have to also advocate at the government and the state political level. How do you, how do you and Jatam strategizing, uh, like, uh, you know, between these two issues that is uh, complicated. Thank you very much. Um, thank you for the question. Hi, Yulia. <laughs> um, well, uh, actually, uh, from the experience of activists in the academia, it's give me um, uh, like a different experience in the context. Sometimes oh, uh, activists kind of really like the black and white, you know, you against or you uh, receive and kind of that, uh, you against the, the mining or not. Um, but in the academic context, then you get, uh, it's actually, um, there is there's various of position of the people. It's really dynamic, it's really fluid, especially when you're not in, um, you know, in the field work or like stay with them uh, uh, for the long times. But um, I think in every case, it's always uh, happen, right? You know, like a pro and contra and kind of that. Um, but I think it's important uh, the way to um, give or providing community with the information is really important. So then they can decide uh, what their, their, their position, for example, that's the first. Um, the second, uh, usually each organization have their own mandate, yeah? Uh, not just JATAM. I think uh, mandate, it means um, what the limitation of the organization uh, that can handle, for example, they cannot, for example, support if community want to negotiate, for example, some of the organization is not allowed to do that. Some of organization uh, uh, um, like uh, takes the, in the middle, like, okay, we help to negotiation kind of that. But uh, as I know, especially uh, Jatam is like, uh, because they uh, supported community affected and they believe that mining is not the way how uh, uh, to have a better, um, what you call it, life in Indonesia um, in, in kind of situation. So uh, in some way, uh, then um, some organization also decided to not a part of the community. Uh, sometimes if community also asks them to not uh, accompany uh, their struggle, for example. But because uh, as I know, Jatam is, um, actually established uh, by uh, the community and the NGOs who, who uh, support them. So it means they will work by, um, by the mandate uh, of the communities. It's not just suddenly come to the area and kind of that. So there is various of the, of the civil society, how they work engage with the case, yeah? Um, so uh, I think, uh, if we, if I want to answer your question, mainly is it depends on how you work closely with the communities. There is always friction, but uh, then you can understand how to uh, solving the friction with the communities is not just uh, by yourself as organization. I hope it's answer your question. Can I just ask one more small question? Okay. Yes, yeah, sure, you can. Thank you, thank you. Um, but my, has ever Jatam decided to leave a particular community because of the frictions is no longer handleable? Like the internal frictions is just getting so tough that Jatam decided to pull off from the community? Has, has there ever experience about that? When, when I was with Jatam, uh, there is one experience when the community um, asked to uh, please not to do campaign because we need to have negotiation and help from the National Com uh, Human Rights Commission to handle uh, this situation. And then, uh, yeah, because the community asks us to do that. Oh. So that's the, the, the example when we, um, I think in the Buyat case. Mm. Okay. Thanks, Lamba. Okay, thank you. The next question. Question, please. Anyone? Uh, Michaela Hauk, you got a question. Yes. Ask your question, please. 
Thank you very much. And my thank you for the great talk. It was very nice to follow you. Uh, I would be curious about the alternatives that are promoted in the activist scene and the ones opposing coal. So by opposing coal, what alternative energy futures are kind of presented as alternatives? Okay. Um, I think when we talk about um, uh, climate change and the context of energy, uh, we need to, I think it's important to not put just the energy in the central uh, because it's have relation with others like a food and kind of that, right? Um, that's the first. Uh, the second, so then talk about energy is also uh, talk about with uh, others aspect. Uh, um, for example, uh, it's easier to imagine in the in the uh, small um, what you call it uh, uh, the smaller communities, but it's difficult to imagine the big things. But you can see from my presentation, for example, uh, in the context of energy, yeah. So the the PLN is the state companies uh, and the government is now. I think it's some of them existing uh, in since 2014 is planned to build a 35 megawatt of coal power plant, no? Um, but actually even they're not finished yet, the electricity is already surplus. Uh, but then they make something that to, to use the energy. I mean, it's not just about the change uh, of the energy, but also what energy you use actually uh, at the moment. So uh, we, we talk about, I, I really um, uh, struggling and not happy to just talk about energy transition, but uh, first is actually some way extracting others mineral, for example, uh, you know, uh, at the moment, uh, nickel and others rare earth mineral uh, for the battery, for example. We, we not even talk about how we re-accounting what actually, uh, how, how big the energy that we need. Um, so then in the case of uh, Indonesian electricity, we don't need yet to build 35, uh, uh, um, you know, megawatt, for example. Uh, so we need to re-account things again, what we need actually, like I mentioned, like, from, from my presentation, 54% of the, of the energy consumption is uh, just 40 something is for the household and maybe commercial um, uh, for the priority one, we need to re-account uh, how, how much energy that actually we need. Then uh, by that, uh, we, we talk about what uh, the energy that we have actually. Of course, uh, we need to uh, account um, uh, several, uh, what you call it, potency that we have. For example, like uh, we have uh, water, we have a wave, we have a solar cell, uh, but not really kind of uh, serious to put that. So, I mean, I don't want to kind of like, um, what you call it, instantly talk about, okay, we need to change with this, but. Uh, even if we really accounts, uh, we not even re accounts how uh, much energy we need actually in the context of uh, you know production and consumption of of energy. Uh, in the fact, when most of energy is uh, spent for the commercial uh, and industrial things. Um, yeah, I hope it's answer your question. Okay, thank you. Now here's a special uh, de demand uh, from the chat room from Mr. David P. Mr. David P. asks, when you suggest sustainable forestry in your country, could you please share and describe recent imagery of global forest disturbance and imaginary of forest disturbance in Indonesia? I don't know whether it's possible, but um, where's this question? I uh, could you please share a description imagine I, I don't get yet the question actually i also know but, but maybe david p mr david p is here uh, mr david p can, can you please uh, i think, think continuing the the question like uh, does your answer suggest 
uh, CCS discussion. Uh, I forget what CCS, carbon capture storage, no? Yes, yeah? carbon capture and sequestration. But okay. The question, um, presented, the question that was presented was um, uh, regarding imagery of um, forest, uh, global forestry. There is imagery tracking uh, activities. And um, you were at the time discussing um, sustainable practices. And if I understand correctly, you're in, in Indonesia. And there is imagery of um, what's known as forest disturbance. I, I get it. Words, is really, sorry, um, your voice is kind of. Dumb. Mr. David P., can you please repeat your question? Uh, we have got some difficulties to understand you. To hear you. Forest disturbance activity in Indonesia. If you are claiming Indonesia is involved with sustainable forestry, would forest disturbance imagery, recent imagery, may be worth uh, observation, review, and discussion? I'm afraid I'm not get your point, but um, I I not claim that Indonesian have sustainable sustainable forestry at the moment. Um, I mean I'm not talking about that yet actually. Um, am I correct to understand the question? Sorry, it's difficult for me to understand um, because it's the the voice. Sorry, David. Okay. Okay, I f think, uh, I hope it was okay. Um, now we're heading towards uh, another question for the audience. Anyone from the audience having another question, please? And I'm not to just the CCS as, uh, as an answer, yeah? Of course. No one, ha yeah, Yuta, uh, do you have a question, please? Yes. Yeah, um, I would like to uh, jump over to the, this gender issue um, because when you mentioned that uh, women um, were even forced to divorce, or let me say the men are di forced to divorce their wives when uh, the child dies in the family. I mean, I don't guess that a woman has so much power to um, take care and and uh, and and. Of, of, her, of, her, of her child, and, and I guess most of these will be accidents, these kind of deaths, as far as I understood it. But if we look to the women in, in, in general, what kind of, of um, yeah, chances do they have to escape such a situation? What I understood is that the situation of the woman is very, very difficult. And what, what can she do, or what, what kind of need might she help to escape the situation? Um, I don't know if I call that accidents uh, because uh, abandoned mind pit is deliberately, no? It's not kind of, uh, not deliberate. So um, even some of the uh, uh, coal mind pit is um, uh, like violating the regulation because uh, in Indonesian regulation, it must be like, uh, uh, at least 500 meters, which is bad, I know. 500 meters from the houses. Um, and in, one, in, in some case, even in your uh, backyard. So, uh, I mean, um, I prefer to not call that accidents uh, because that also used by the police, for example, when there is uh, one of the, the, the children who died is disability person, um, the police said it's not continuing um, the, the investigation because it's accidents, you know, why disability people come to that area, kind of that. Um, so that's the first, um, the escape. Uh, yes, it's difficult um, uh, to escape. Uh, but I mean, um, I think what I mentioned to you, I mean, maybe it's not even like uh, a few of uh, their situation is really partial 
uh, experience that that I share about. Uh, I I believe there is uh, more than that. For example, because um, uh, there is uh, difficulties of water at the moment in the city, so uh, sometimes uh, the family um, just uh, use the the water from the the coal pits, abandoned coal pits, um, and uh, well, yeah, it, kind of that. Um, they, they, they don't have a choice in the context of uh, clean water and kind of that. But uh, what I said, uh, I think is what, what, even in that kind of situation, um, what they do is uh, for me, it's really um, like um, giving hope in the context of how they try to uh, giving uh, empathy to others' mothers, for example, or even come to the uh, ask to the the head of the school of uh, his son to speak to the to the student, for example. Um, I mean, uh, the the persistence, the the struggle of the the mothers is really uh, important um, to to uh, express that there is something happened there. Even uh, uh, how they connecting with the, with the groups, the Tuesday, uh, what you call it, uh, Tuesday action, every Tuesday, that, that uh, between them is more, more youth in East Kalimantan uh, um, aware about uh, the mother situation um, around uh, coal mine, for example. So yes, they are in the difficult um, uh, situation. And I think it will more in the context of Omnibus Law. OK. Here in the chat room, uh, Mr. David says, thank you for your time and consideration. And Ms. Julia, Julia also says, dear organizers, thank you for this discussion. I would like to excuse myself first. Thank you very much for you both. Also, uh, now the next one, having a question, please. Yeah, Mr. Uh, Fung the Throng. Uh, it's good to interest me. Uh, where is the position of, or the place of the workers of the mining coal uh, companies? How, uh, uh, how are their positions? towards the protest actions performed by their wives, their mothers, their sisters. Because it uh, affects uh, very, uh, in, a, in a direct way their workplace, right? And, and so they are sort of great, great uh, uh, earner. And so in your, in that one. thank you. Well, um, for me, it's actually labor also affected, yeah? Because they are in the front of uh, front line is like in the mining area, uh, kind of that. Um, uh, they rely on the mining is is um, I think it's important to highlight because, you know, the the coal is like uh, the price of coal is is like waving also, right? Um, I think in two thousand fourteen, in two thousand fifteen, uh, many of them uh, get fired because um, you know the 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 low price of the coal. Um, I mean, some way uh, they they also kind of affected uh, by coal mine, and um, of course the even um, they said that uh, wages in the coal mine is higher. But um, I think we don't know the the effect work in the coal mine after they like uh, you know the mining stop and kind of that. Um, so. Uh, in a way, sometimes uh, in the in the area that really rely on mining, it's become naturalization when um, you know you like uh, uh, surrounding by uh, uh, coal mine and the worker every time is kind of that. So sometimes difficult to uh, take distance when um, there is community affected by coal mine, for example. So sometimes you can even uh, find in, in one family, um, there is uh, some of the worker in the coal mine, but others is also get affected from mining, for example. I mean, um, you cannot separate in kind of, uh, you know, uh, their position because 
in the situation of rely on um, a coal mine is difficult. Sometimes company take advantage by recruiting um, the, the family that resist to mining become uh, their labor. So in, in Macroman case, for example, um, the community member um, uh, work for the company and then if there is uh, you know plot or something like that hit the village and then um, uh, the worker is kind of what you call it uh, registering who get affected kind of that so it's kind of uh, um, the community is not face to face with the with the company but with their community itself so um, yeah the, there's there's the the uh, one of uh, the way and the second is in in some case also um, the labor also get difficulty for example to build uh, their union for example yeah so it makes difficult for them also uh, for uh, kind of uh, you know to fight for their right some of the case uh, when the the price of the coal uh, fall and then um, the um, the, the labor not get paid by the company uh, months, uh, for example. So um, then there is come to riot uh, because, you know, there's the strike of the, of the labor um, in the company. So there is um, there's different dimensions, uh, but in, in some case also um, because when there is community, they're also part of the labor. Um, they also uh, push uh, doing protests how to, in central Kalimantan, for example, how the labor and the community united to push the government to, no, to push the company to providing uh, for um, transportation, for example, uh, because um, in that area, uh, it's difficult to, um, there is no transportation. So there is, so different, different of experience, um, in the context of labor and um, uh, community affected. But uh, learn from the omnibus law thing. Um, I see there is, there is a hope how to communicating actually in the context of um, labor uh, groups and also um, environmental organization, even the indigenous people. Um, uh, it's sort like try to understand each other uh, what uh, they're facing uh, actually. Um, so I think um, that's important step to continuing to understanding how to have a kind of, um, you know, future discussion that make them not divided uh, or, you know, push to become a different fraction in the future. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, thank you for all your questions. Unfortunately, our time uh, is running off. Uh, like it always is, our time is limited. So therefore, um, I would like um, to hand over um, to, uh, to the next uh, moderator of the next session to make his announcement now. Who is going to lead the moderation next time? I think you, Antonia? Or? Yeah, that's right. Okay, Antonia, go on, please. Okay. First of all, thank you, Korai, and thank you, Ms. Maimuna, for this very interesting presentation. Next week, we will be hearing a lecture by Dr. Helena Varki, I hope I pronounced it correctly, I'm not sure, from the University of Malaya in Malaysia, titled Land Use Change, Fires and Hate in Southeast Asia. I personally think that this topic is very interesting and that the, her lecture will be quite informative. So I hope that many people will be joining for the presentation, the following question and answer session and the discussion afterwards. That's all I have to say. Okay. Thank you very much. Um, Tima Kasi, Siti Mayuna, uh, und Presentasi Anda, dann Jabab Jabab Anda, uh, Harini, di Discussi uh, Kita. Thank you very much for um, uh, your presentation and for your, all your answers. Um, and I would also like uh, to thank uh, the audience for their participations and uh, their um, questions they put today. Um, I, it was also today a big pleasure for me to lead the moderation of today, uh, although, uh, although we had some sound audio problems, but it was a big uh, pleasure for me, and you're always welcome to, particip uh, to participate 
and come here again. Sampai jumpa. Bye. Thanks, everyone. Thank you. Bye -bye. See you next week. Bye-bye.